Mr. Nelson, good evening, sir. Hi, teacher. Hello. So with all the powers now, ya está con todos los poderes. <laughs> Mr. Edwin, hello, sir. Hello, teacher. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Miss Susana Portillo, hello. Hello, teacher. Hello, hello. We had a rainy weekend, I can see that, right? Fin fine semana lluvioso. But that's good. I mean, temperatures went down, but bajaron las temperaturas, and it helps us to sleep. Nos ayuda a dormir un poco, right? Yes. Yeah, that's the idea. Como que se quiere venir, ¿verdad, el invierno? Sí, ahora yo veo aquí en Santa Ana, una tarde. Aquí en San Salvador también. Mm -hmm. Yo veo un poquito. Así que vamos a ver. Mr. Raúl, hello, sir. You know, very early today, bien tempranito, right? Hello, teacher. Good evening. Good evening, sir. It's a miracle. It's, it's a, a miracle, miracle, yes. But not because you don't want to. It's because your job, you know, steals time from you, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's why. That's why. <clears throat> nice. All right, so let's begin with this, if you don't mind. So here we go. All right. So uh, we will start with a review uh, about what we did last time. Last time we studied uh, writing emails. And last week we covered simple passing, making requests. Let me share the screen with you. Just one second, please. Compartimos pantalla un instante. All right, here we go. So welcome uh, to the last a day of the third week. Este es el último día de la tercera semana, ¿verdad? Si usted va uh, contando, ¿verdad? Los días que hacen falta. This is the countdown. And after today, five more classes, my friends. All right? Five more classes, you know, until this is over. All right? Yeah, this is almost done, right? So, uh, this evening, we will review writing emails, simple pass, and making requests. About writing emails, I will give you some examples about the types of emails that you can write, like apologizing, selling, the reporting, and like inviting people for a meeting and so on. Simple pass, it will be a reading, two listenings, and one or two conversations in the simple pass. Making requests, there will be some uh, grammar uh, activities Two tasks to be specific. Así que tenemos varias prácticas por ahí, ¿verdad? And some vocabulary about, uh, let's see, uh, companies. Hay también una cuestión de vocabulario, like matching, that we're going to cover this evening. Ok. Así que, qué bueno que están acá en un lunes. Tercera semana se cierra con, con, con esta clase. Uh, and tomorrow we start with week number four. Ok. Entonces, esta es la... la Décimo quinta clase, right? The 15th class. Okay. Por si está llevando la cuenta. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So let's begin with this. So email phrases, formal email phrases. Uh, greetings. By the way, you don't have to uh, write this down. 
no lo tiene que escribir. Yo le voy a compartir al final de la clase un documento para que usted lo tenga ya a la mano. Right now, just pay, pay attention to the pronunciation and stop like that. Eh, I will choose some, some volunteers to help me read the phrases over there. Okay? Let's say I'm going to choose the first victim over here. All right? If you don't mind. And I will start with, uh, with a lady. All right? Miss Susana Portillo. Just because you uh, arrived early. Porque llego temprano. Vamos a, a premiarla. <laughs> <laughs> Gran premio, dígame. <laughs> right? Así mejor pierdo. <laughs> All right, yes. Ahora entro más, más tarde. <laughs> yeah, maybe you're, you're going to be a late comer, right? At least a late comer. Okay, continue, please. I mean, start. Greetings, mm -hmm. dear sir or madam, to whom it may concern, dear Mr. or Mrs. Jones, dear Dr. Smith. Thank you so much. In your case, I'm gonna I'm gonna write to you, dear Doctor Portillo, right? <laughs> to you, right? Thank you. And then, dear sir, like I'm talking to Mr. Edwin, right? Or let's see, Mr. Raul. Let me just clarify something over here, right? Yo sé que no es correcto decirles eh, Mr. y decirles el nombre, verdad? Okay. En inglés tiene que ser Mr. Uh, Melendez. And let's see, Mr. Sevillano, right? Pero por cuestión de confianza y porque estamos en El Salvador, yo les digo Mr. Raul, este, Mr. Edwin, ¿verdad? Porque en español así decimos, ¿verdad? Don Raul, ¿verdad? Don Edwin. That's why, okay? But the correct way to say it is Mr. Melendez, Mr. Sevillano. Y también lo digo así porque algunos de ustedes como que hay a quien le está diciendo, ¿verdad? ¿Qué, qué, qué, qué compañero va a ser, verdad? Entonces, para ponerlos un poquito en contexto. Entonces, en inglés no decimos el Mr. ni el Miss con el primer nombre, sino que con el apellido. Y si es de casado, like, for example, I have Miss, let's see over here. I have Miss Carmen, but I want to see your last name over here. Mrs. Orellana. Am I correct? Uh, Mrs. Orellana. Mrs. Mrs. Orellana, right? Yeah. El Mrs. means de casado, ¿verdad? De, right? Mrs. All right? If you were single, I would call you Miss, like in this case. En el tercer ejemplo, tenemos Dear Mr. Don Fulano, querido Don Fulano, right? Or uh, querida Jones, la, la M y la S, no digo MS, ¿verdad? That's something else, right? <laughs> well, okay, so la M y la S. En minúscula significa eh, señorita, ¿verdad? O puede ser también señora, pero no, no está casada. All right? Tengo que poner la M mayúscula, R minúscula y la S minúscula para que signifique de casada. All right? Sería Mrs. Jones, señora de Jones. All right? All right, the first one. Dear sir or madame. Querido señor o señora. Madame. Or ma'am, people say. To whom it may concern, a quien concierne, ¿verdad? O a quien corresponda, perdón. Eh, these are very formal phrases, by the way. These are formal phrases. Dear Dr. Smith, in a formal letter or a formal email, you know that you need to write the title of the person you're addressing, ¿verdad? Entonces, en, en cuestiones formales, hay que poner el título de la persona o el apellido, you know, or the last name or whatever. All right, so reason for writing an email is to reply, you know, an email that you get. So you have, I'm writing, and then you continue with her. Let me choose the reader who's gonna help me right now. It's going to be Mr. Edwin uh, Sevillano. Mr. Sevillano, would you help us read? You I'm writing. Que lo lea, sorry. <laughs> yes, please, could you read it? Oh, yeah, sorry. thank you, thank you. I am writing to make a reservation to apply for the position of to, conf to confirm my booking, to ask for further information about with reference to all telephone conversation on Friday. I would like to let you know that 
All right, so thank you, sir. So I'm writing. You can start with that expression over there. I'm writing, and then you have four reasons over there. To make a reservation in case you're calling to a hotel. Te llamando un hotel. To apply for the position of, in case you're applying for a promotion or for a, a job opening, ¿verdad? Está porque abrieron eh, la, la plaza, entonces está aplicando. To confirm my booking, confirmar la reservación, all right? Booking. And in this case, it applies to airplanes, hotels, or any type of reservation, all right? Eh, to ask for further, further information about, further, further, para preguntar o para, para obtener más información al respecto. Right. Teacher, Father, yes. And, um, in this case, uh, is the same meaning of further or more information to ask for more information. For correct, correct. Okay. It's another kind of it, another it's like, kind it, to think the same yeah. thing. Yeah, it's it's more formal to say that. Right? I'm more formal. Okay. Correct. Yeah, and I would say this is the the right way to say it. Uh, for example, I can tell you, I will give you further information, which means I will give you more information, further, mm -hmm. right? Further. And you have to write it down with you because in this case, it means extra in addition to or more. If you write it down with A, it, it could also mean like this times, you know, it, it's further, you know, okay. for my house, all right? And then we have with reference to our telephone conversation on Friday. I would like to let you know that these are two separate phrases, ¿verdad? No nos confundamos, son dos frases separadas. This is one and this is the other one. De acuerdo a nuestra conversación en el teléfono. That's how we say it in Spanish, okay? O de acuerdo al hablado, ¿verdad? With reference to our telephone conversation or with reference to our uh, WhatsApp conversation, right? Or with reference to our conversation on the phone, you can say with reference to our conversation on the phone or over the phone, okay? Either way, it's correct, all right? So let's continue. I will share the phrases with you later on. Yo les voy a compartir las frases and the slides later on. So example number three, you write emails, you know, for making a request or asking for information, verdad? For example, if, or sometimes you use Facebook, and then you ask for the price and people tell you, inbox me, please. Y nunca le mandan la información, pero nunca publican, le dicen inbox all the time. They tell you that all the time. <laughs> all right, so let me choose someone over here who can help me read. Um, uh, Miss Carmen, go ahead, please. Uh, Mrs. Oriana. Okay, making a request, asking for information. Could you please let me know if you can attend if you are available for a meeting on 12th December, or could you possibly arrange a meeting with the logistic manager? I will also like to know if there are any swimming pool in your area. All right, thank you so much. Yeah, I mean, these are just, let's see, uh, emails stutters, verdad? Frases para iniciar un, or comp para, comp para escribir un correo, right? So could you please let me know? Remember, we start with could you please, that's a request. If you can attend, all right? If you can attend the meeting, I would, I would really appreciate it, ¿verdad? Comenzamos, si usted puede atender, ¿verdad? Tal cosa. If you are available for a meeting, ¿verdad? Si usted está dis disponible, right? So if you are not doing anything, all right? And it's, I think it's better if you write the complete date. ¿Verdad? Sería lo mejor escribir la fecha completa. Could you possibly arrange, verdad? O sea, podría, o tiene la posibilidad, verdad, de arreglar o de agendar, de agendar una reunión. Okay. And then you have the logistics manager. I would also like to know, verdad, también me gustaría saber si hay alguna eh, piscina eh, disponible in your area. Area. All right. Area. Okay. Thank you so much. Number four. So we write emails for offering help or giving information. All right. And in this case, let me choose, if you don't mind, uh, Mr. Nelson, do you copy, sir? Mr. Nelson. 
Yes, teacher. Right, yeah, go ahead, please, Mr. Landis. Just help me read. Okay. Okay, we are happy to let you know that your article has been selected for publication. I'm glad to inform you that we will be holding our annual conference in Brussels on 20 September 2014. Sorry, sir, I was sure a little need, Okay. Sure, you need any further any further information, assistant. Please do not hesitate. Hesitate. hesitate to contact you. Yeah, thank you so much, sir. So we are happy to let you know that your article has been selected for publication in case you're a, a writer like a reporter, a journalist, or you are an author, right? You're like writing a book. So, so estamos contentos, ¿verdad? O nos da satisfacción, ¿verdad? De hacerles saber. Así se traduce, ¿verdad? No es que estoy feliz o estoy contento. Nos da satisfacción, right? We are happy to let you know that you have been accepted, you know, to the program, ¿verdad? Esa es una de las mejores frases que uno puede recibir, right? We are happy to let you know that uh, your promotion has been as accepted, right? Or that you have been accepted at the job, right, Mr. Melendez? When you were accepted at the new job over there? Yes, sir. Because you have high expectations. Teníamos expectativas over there, correct. You have made plans already. I'm glad to inform, that, to inform you that we will be holding our annual, annual conference in Brussels in, on, on September 20th. 2014, ¿verdad? Nos da mucho gusto informarle, ¿verdad? Que nos estaremos celebrando nuestra conferencia anual. And then you say the, 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 the place over in Bruselas. The last one, should you need any further information, ¿verdad? Si necesita información extra, ¿verdad? O asistencia o ayuda, please do not hesitate to contact us, ¿verdad? No dude en contactarnos, ¿verdad? Do not hesitate, hesitate. Right, hesitate, right? And this word apl applies to anything, right? If you're not 100% 100 sure about something, you are hesitating, ¿verdad? Cuando no estamos seguros de algo, ¿verdad? Titubeamos, creo que es la palabra en español, o dudamos. Eso es verdad, hesitate, All right? Hesitate. Okay. Sure. Yes. I'm sorry. In the last statement, uh, I don't know if you can say, if you... If you need any further information, assistance, please do not hesitate to contact. If you need. Yeah, you can say that, but I have seen this expression just that way. And that's how people in the States uh, write it down. Okay. You can say uh, the grammar, it's incorrect because it, it's like a question. It's like, should you? Should but, you? That's, but that's how you're supposed to say it. That's how people say it, all right? And yes, you can say, if you need uh, any further information, blah, 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 that's okay. But mm -hmm. it's okay if you say, should you need any further information? And then you continue. So like that, it's okay. And it's formal, all right? Yeah. And you know, to be honest with you, Miss Carmen, I, I I also wondered the same when that when I saw this the first time. I thought, okay, this is incorrect. You know, this is wrong. Um, it should be if you need any further information, that's okay. But if you write it uh, that way, people will will know that you're not a native speaker. <laughs> All right. So I think it's better if you write it down that way. Okay. Mm -hmm. Should you need any further information? All right. So let's continue over here. Um, reason number five to, uh, you know, for writing emails, complaining, ¿verdad? Las quejas, you know, this is something very common, okay? It happens all the time in companies. If you work for an airplane uh, or if you work for customer service or, or if your job is to, uh, uh, let's see, uh, requests, request orders or, or submit orders, anything you do, it has to do with complaints, all right? Anything. 
So let me choose who's gonna help us right over here. Um, Mr. Caesar, would you help us, sir? Complaining. Yes, Chris. Okay. I'm writing to express my dis dissatisfaction uh, which to complain about. I regret to say that I was not completely uh, satisfied with the wrong you probably use. Probably I would like to receive a full refund and compensate compensation for the, for the damage. damage. Damages, damages. All right. Thank you, sir. Damages. Okay, so you start with I'm writing. What for? Para qué? To express my dissatisfaction with. Para expresar mi. Eh, ¿Cómo se dice en, en español? Disatisfacción, no, ¿verdad? Conformidad. No conforme. Ajá, o inconformidad. Inconformidad, right? Inconformidad, yes. Inconformidad con. O oh, insatisfacción. Insatisfacción, correct. Insatisfacción. Thank you. Uh, to complain about, I'm writing to complain about, ¿verdad? Estoy escribiendo para quejarme acerca de to complain about the package, to complain about the service, about the product, about the, uh, uh, let's see, electronics, all right? So I regret to say, ¿verdad? Eh, lamento mencionarle, ¿verdad? I regret to say, ¿verdad? No es que me arrepiento, ¿verdad? En este contexto, regret means eh, lamento, ¿verdad? Decirlo, I regret to say. Pero en realidad, el verbo solito, regret, significa eh, arrepentirse, ¿verdad? All right? Regret. But in this context, it means lamento mencionar. All right? I regret to say that I was not completely satisfied, ¿verdad? Lamento mencionar que no fui mm, completamente eh, satisfecho, ¿verdad? With the room you provided us. O que el, 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 la habitación, ¿verdad? Que me, pro, que me dieron, ¿verdad? O que me prometieron. O sea, no era lo mejor. That's what we're saying. Provided. Provided means give. Proveer, provided. Ok. Entonces, el verbo formal, en lugar de decir give, van a decir provide. Right? Provide, como el proveedor, ¿verdad? Es a provider. Right? Ok. And the last one, I would like to receive a full refund in compensation for the damages. Right? Quiero recibir, ¿verdad? Un reembolso, ¿verdad? Completo. Y una compensación por los, por los daños. All right. I would say that the last uh, request is what customers or clients complain the most about, right? Creo que eso es para que se quejan, ¿verdad? Quiero, regreseme el pisto, right? <laughs> I want the full refund, right? Yeah, and you have to compensate, you know, for the damages and for the weight, ¿verdad? Por, por el tiempo de espera, ¿verdad? Okay, that's what customers tell you all the time. So let's continue over here. So so sometimes you write apologizing, apologizing correct? Apologizing. You apologize. Apologize. All right. Disculparse is apologize. All right. To say that you I'm sorry, okay, or that you regret something. Uh, Let's see over here who's gonna help us. Uh, Miss Evelyn, uh, Mrs. Molina. Yes. Yeah. Would we you help will, us? Mm -hmm. Yes. We would like to apologize. Apologize. Come on, little teacher. Apologize. Yes, apologize. We would like to apologize for any convenience cause. Please accept our apologies for the delay please let let us know what we can do to compensate you for the damage caused we will make sure that this will not happen again in the future all right thank you so much so apologizing 
we would like to apologize for any inconvenience, inconvenience cause. Right? Nos gustaría disculparnos, externar nuestra disculpa, ¿verdad? Por cualquier inconveniente causado. All right? Please accept, ¿verdad? El verbo aceptar lo va a decir como con una K, ac, y luego con una S, accept. Ac, accept, right? No vamos a decir accept, no, accept. Please accept our apologies for the delay. Okay, so we have two variations of the same word, ¿verdad? Tenemos apologize as a verb, disculparse, and apologies is son disculpas, right? Give apologies and accept apologies or apologize, right? For the delay, delay is tardanza, ¿verdad? Tardanza, delay, okay? All right, so and the next one is, please let us know what we can do to compensate you for the damages caused. Háganos saber, por favor, qué podemos hacer para compensarle ¿verdad? por las pérdidas causadas. Compensate. And the last one, we will uh, make sure, we will make sure that this will not happen again in the future. Nos cercioraremos o nos aseguraremos que esto eh, no suceda en, en el futuro. Ok, otra vez. We will make sure, ¿verdad? Le dicen, hagas cerciores, o sea, asegúrese. We will make sure over there. Any questions so far, my friends? No? No questions over there. Ok. All right, so let's continue over here. Remember that by the end of this session, I will share with you this. Hold on. All right. Uh, al final de la clase les voy a compartir este vocabulario para que ustedes lo tengan ya a la mano, ¿verdad? Si quieren ir tomando puntes, that's okay, but uh, you don't really have to do it. But my suggestion is just write the uh, keywords. Solo escribamos palabras claves, ¿verdad? O por lo menos las categorías. Eh, next one, attaching files. Cuando usted adjunta documentos o archivos, you know, this is the word then that you can use. And you may be wondering, so why are we talking about this? Because last Friday you wrote an email to me and I, I replied to you. Eh, de hecho, el, el día sábado les contesté, ¿verdad? En el día del trabajo. <laughs> Haciendo honor, ¿verdad? <laughs> al, 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 al día. All right. So I replied to most of you that day. All right. And for example, if you told me uh, the request is already, uh, uh, let's see, submitted, uh, please, please pay, como Mr. Mr. Melendez, you know, you wrote to me, this is the order, please issue the payment. So I, I texted you, sure, sir. Yeah, let me pay you. <laughs> All right. And then I, I give you the feedback after that one, saying this is, this is good, you know, well, well done. Uh, so keep it up. All right. Primero les, les contesté como si en realidad yo fuera parte de, de su business y luego ya les mandé como, como, como profesor. ¿verdad? Entonces, that's why. And this is the general feedback. Entonces aquí vamos a agarrar, ¿verdad? Un poquito para cada, cada, cada uno, ¿verdad? Nos puede servir. So, attaching files. Eh, Mr. Alfonso, I'm sorry, Tony Stark. Help us, sir. Hi, <coughs> teacher. <laughs> Hello, sir. Are you sick? Sentando un poco mal de la garganta todavía. That's okay, sir. Uh, let me choose somebody else. All right. <coughs> That's okay. Don't worry about it. All right. Okay. Um, Mr. Gilberto eh, Mendoza, would you help us, sir? Mr. Gilbert. If your microphone is working, by the way. All right. Uh, okay, so Miss Sonia Mabel, please, would you help us with this? One? Okay. All right. Attaching files. I'm attaching my CV for your consideration. I am sending you the brochure as an attachment. Please see the statement uh, attached. Please find attached the file you requested. All right, thank you so much. So attaching files, adjuntando archivos. 
I'm attaching okay. my CV for your consideration, ¿verdad? El curriculum vitae. Or the resume. You can say resume. Así como se, se escucha, ¿verdad? Resume. Like that. Solo con una tilde en la E, porque es una palabra eh, francesa. It's a French word, which is borrowed from, uh, from there, and use it in English. Resume is the same as curriculum, right? Or CV. I'm sending you the brochure as an attachment, ¿verdad? Le estoy mandando el brochure, ¿verdad? Como un documento junto. Please see the, the statement attached, ¿verdad? The statement, eh, Mr. Cesar, what will be the translation of this, sir? Como declaración, right? Declaración, sir. Statement, something like that, right? Okay. Like tax statement. Yes, sir. Like okay, thank you, mm -hmm. sir. Eh, so please find attached the file you request. ¿Verdad? No vamos a decir attached. No, no, no. Vamos a decir attached con una T. ¿Verdad? Attached. Recordemos que, que lo, 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 los sonidos que se asemejan o van cerquita de la S en pasado, como es un verbo regular, pronunciamos como T. Attached. Attached the file you requested. Requested. All right. Entonces, eh, por favor, ¿verdad? Encuentre el documento adjunto como usted ¿verdad? lo solicitó. All right. Estas ya son frases dadas, ¿verdad? These are like given uh, structures or, or phrases. Okay. Ending, let's see. Yeah, that was the last one. So ending closing formula. All right. Ending closing formula. ¿verdad? Entonces, ¿cómo vamos a cerrar, ¿verdad? Escribir la frase de cierre. We're going to find out over here, my friends. Okay. Uh, let me choose the next uh, person over here. Uh, it's going to be Miss Susana uh, Hernandez, please. Hi. Hello. The closing formula. Yeah. I look forward to hearing from you. Mm -hmm. Yours faithfully. When you start with your sir, madam. Yours sincerely. When you start with the name E.H. Dear Miss Collins. All right. Thank you so much. Now, let me just clarify something over here. Uh, I look forward forward to hearing from you. Remember that if you have these two, you need to have an infinitive. But in this case, this is an exception. You know, this is a, a it's breaking the rules. So I look forward to hearing from you. Significa, verdad, voy a estar o espero con ansias. Toda esta frase, verdad, o estoy a la espera de hasta aquí. Hasta el tú significa estoy a la espera, estaré pendiente, estaré expectante, eh, estaré, estaré esperando con ansias. All right. I look forward to. Así significa. Luego usted, cualquier cosa que le ponga, un verbo. I look forward to uh, listening from you, to uh, write, uh, to getting the uh, email from you, or to uh, getting the email or a response from you. O sea, el verbo acá va a ir en ING. And that is just an exception, porque la frase es así, all right? So that's the phrase over there, just like that, okay? Uh, yours faithfully, ¿verdad? Since, uh, atentamente, yours faithfully, ¿verdad? Esta frase es atentamente, como sincerely yours, and best regards, or yours sincerely, this ones basically mean the same, all right? When you start with dear sir or man, right? Entonces, cuando comienza usted con, con señor fulano de tal, pero querido señor, ¿verdad? o querida señora, okay. o est estimado, perdón, así es la traducción, estimado señor, estimado, se estimada señora, right? Yours sincerely, right? Sincerely, yours sincerely. When you start with the name, all right? So what's the difference between faithfully and sincerely? With faithfully is formal, And with sincerely is, let's say, like more casual. Porque con faithfully te comenzamos con el apellido, you know, estimado señor, right? And, um, o estimada señora. Yours sincerely, we start with the name. Example, gratia, right? This one, you know, this is example. Dear Miss Collins, ¿verdad? Querida señorita Collins, right? Over here. Okay. O podemos decir uh, uh, Miss Uh, columns or the dear the Maria, etc. Right over there. Entonces, pero in reality, my friends, you can use either ones, you know, like, like synonyms. Pero en la realidad, usted puede ocupar cualquiera, ¿verdad? Como synonyms. Okay? So that's the idea over there. So we just study, uh, let me go back over there, like email phrases. 
Greetings, los saludos. To whom you may concern, ¿verdad? A quien corresponda. To whom you may concern. Está muy, esta frase muy buena de aprendérsela. To whom you may concern. Reasons for writing, reply. Para, para responder, ¿verdad? Replying, ¿verdad? Yo le estoy escribiendo para. And writing to, ¿ok? O de acuerdo a nuestra conversación. We reference to our telephone conversation. Making a request, ¿verdad? ¿verdad? Hacer una solicitud o pedir algo. Could you please? All right. I would also. All right. Para ofrecer algo, dar información, giving information. I'm glad to inform you. We are happy to let you know. Should you need any further information, ¿verdad? Si necesita información extra, ¿verdad? No duden en contactarnos. Complaining, esto, ¿verdad? El día a día. I would like to receive a full refund, ¿verdad? Deme todo el pisto. Apologizing, ¿verdad? En, 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 en Insta for, right? Yeah, give me all the, the, the hours, right? <laughs> I invested on you guys, ¿verdad? Regreseme mi tiempo, right? <laughs> okay, so apologizing, right? Please accept our apologies, por favor, acepte nuestras disculpas por la tardanza, attaching files, adjuntar archivos. Please see the statement, I'm sending you the brochure, I'm sending you the uh, document as an attachment. Esta frase, save it, please, right? Guardémosla. Y el, y el cierre, closing formula, I, I look forward to hearing from you. This one, my friends, save it. Right? This one, save it. It applies to any, uh, let's see, uh, occasion. Para cualquier ocasión, aplica eso. Okay. Any questions so far? Yes. Go ahead, please, Ms. Carmen. Uh, uh, could you repeat the, the meaning of EG? Exempli gratia. Yeah, exempli gratia. Yeah. Uh, for example, it means, for instance. Could you repeat the pronunciation yeah but that that's actually in latin so it's it's uh -huh. it's uh -huh. example example gratia okay Thank yeah you. yeah you can say for example yeah uh, yeah the thing is that this is, this, yeah correct this is a very uh, eg you would say but in reality you say example all right thank you you're welcome but when you write an email my friends i need to clarify this when you write an email you just start Yours, I mean, you just close it, right? Obviamente, esta, esta es para decir adiós, pero tú say goodbye. You say, yours sincerely or sincerely yours, eh, Mr. Alfaro, right? You don't have to say example gratis, right? Or, or, for example, I'm just giving you an example right now. Esto por cuestiones, ¿verdad? De ilustración, el autor puso esto, ¿verdad? Por ejemplo, right? Because this is a formal language, ¿verdad? Ese es un, un, un idioma bastante, un lenguaje, perdón, bien formal, right? Okay. Uh, now, let's move forward with something else over here. General listening quiz, family activities, all right? So I will share with you a, a link to these uh, family activities, and then you're going to take the quiz and send the score to me as a direct message, you know, in private or in the uh, group chat. All right, so let me just one second so I can send this to you. So right now, put on your headsets, pongámonos nuestros audífonos, and uh, you're gonna be uh, ready to take this. All right, here we go. Now we're going to change, you know, uh, totally the, the the course of this class. Vamos a cambiar el curso de, de, de la clase ahorita, verdad? Let's 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 see. Put put aside, pongamos a un lado, or or on hold, or in standby, verdad? Un momento the uh, that vocabulary right now, okay? So just one second over here. Um, all right, just one second over here. All right, so any questions so far, by the way? Alguna consulta por el momento? All right, no estoy viendo la cámara, por cierto, van a, van a disculpar. Yes, more. Eh, si usted comparte pantalla, si trabaja esto en el grupo reducido, le pido eh, encarecidamente, ¿verdad? Como un favor, que borremos el enlace, ¿verdad? Por cualquier cosa. No vaya a ser, ¿verdad? Eh, here we go. And uh, bear with me just one second. Come over here, please.
All right. I, I also shared the, the link with you on this uh, Zoom chat conversation. También aquí en el chat de, de Zoom se los compartí. Okay. There you have it. One second, please. Okay. I'm sorry. Do not start yet, ¿verdad? No comencemos todavía. Let's get familiar with this. All right? Let's get familiar with this. Uh, we're going to start in one minute. So I'm going to share the screen, but first I need to access to this and erase the uh, la dirección web. Pero vamos a borrar esto and be ready to, to start over here. Now, just keep in mind that uh, I will play the listening for you the first time. And the second time, you play it by yourself. Yo les comparto el audio, ¿verdad? La primera vez, la segunda vez usted lo escucha. And then the, send the, the score to me. All right? So that's what we're going to do. Let me just one second over here. Let me share the screen with you. And then we take it from there. All right? So just one second. All right, so bear with me just one second. Permítame un momento, solamente quiero arreglar algo, ¿verdad? quitarle la cuestión de los anuncios y todo eso, ¿verdad? Que nosotros no necesitamos por acá. Just one second, over here. All right. Okay. All right, so here we go. Um, let me just uh, go over the auctions over here. And then we're going to start. So listening, uh, listen to the recording and, and answer the questions over there. Besides paper books, what did the little girl make with paper at school? So this is a conversation between uh, the father and the daughter. And the father uh, is asking the daughter questions about the school, right? So what she did at a school. So the voice you're going to listen to, it's from a uh, girl who's like eight or nine years old or less, maybe. Maybe she's in kindergarten. I don't really remember. But uh, if it's difficult for you to understand, that's okay. Because understanding uh, children, right, it's difficult. Okay? Entonces, la voz va a ser de una niña y del papá. So this is a real conversation over there. So besides paper, books... What did the little girl make with paper at school? ¿verdad? Además, ¿verdad? De hacer libros, ¿verdad? De papel o algo así. ¿Qué, ¿Qué hizo la niña en la escuela? Maybe a person, a building, an animal. The girl used crayons, paper, and maybe glue, pencils, tape. What did the girl do after the school beside uh, playing? ¿Qué hizo además, verdad? Después de la escuela, además de jugar. She went to the store, she watched television, she rode her bicycle. The next one, and the last one, no, no, no. The girl played with her cousin, father, or teacher at the school. Where does this conversation most probably take place, verdad? Donde acontece esta conversación? En donde, verdad, tiene lugar? At a house, en una casa, at a park, or at a school. Now, let me just make sure that uh, you're listening to this and just confirm it. Pues. Solo me confirman si se escucha y Welcome aquí home, Dad. retrocedo. Oh, Emily, how are you today? Yeah, okay. Fine. Good. And how was... Nice. You see, this is the voice, right? It's from a baby girl, all right? So one second. Let me test the volume, all right? At 100% now. And here we go. Listen up, please. Welcome home, Dad. Oh, Emily, how are you today? Fine. Good, and how was school today? Really fun. Good, and what did you do? We made things. Like what types of things did you make? We made books. You made books, okay. And what else? We we made paper kangaroos. You made paper kangaroos. Okay, and what did you need to make your paper kangaroos? What kind of supplies did you need? We used crayons. Paper, glue, and we had to follow directions. Well, good. And uh, what did you do after school? 
We went home, played games, and then Mom said that you went to the junior high school. I rode my bike in the tennis court. Did you go by yourself? I went with the whole family, and we went with Nathan, Sarah, Rachel. You went with your cousins. And my mom. Well, that's great. Well, let's get ready for dinner. Okay. Okay. So that's the conversation. Dad and daughter. All right. Asking, you know, how the day was at school, like. Okay. So. For me, it was difficult to understand because of the baby girl the first time, right? But now you're familiar a little bit. You know, the baby girl is sweet, is cute, and the dad asks questions after question, you know, a spoon after a spoon, right? I see a cucharada, right? Spoonful. <laughs> or what you did over there. Those are children, all right? Now, uh, play the audio by yourself. And then once you're done, you can play a second time, a third time, as many times as you as you want to or need to. And once you're done, just share your story with me. All right. Yes. Do we have an understanding? Okay. Thank you so much. Reproduzcanlo por su propia cuenta y voy a mantenerme en silencio. Okay. Thank you. All right, so let, let's let's go over the um, the answers over here, okay? So just one second over here. Revisemos las respuestas rápidamente. So well, let me just one second over here. All right, so thank you so much for sending the answers. Okay, I mean the uh, Discord to me. All right, so can I have a volunteer, not a victim, all right? Un voluntario, ¿verdad? No víctima. <laughs> all right, that can help us with the answers over here. Please. All right, Miss uh, Lazo, thank you, please. Go ahead. This one. So besides paper books, could you read that question and the, and the answer, please? 
an animal. That's correct. And, and do you remember what type of animal by any chance? Um, well, I mean, a kangaroo, girl? Yeah, correct. A kangaroo, right? A kangaroo. Yes. Thank you. They, they say it over there. You see, like, like I'm the dad, right? Like what, like what types of things did you make? Uh, we made books. You made books. Okay. And what else? We, uh, we, we made paper kangaroos. All right. Thank you. So number two. Glue. Correct. Yeah. Used uh, crayons paper, paper, and, and glue. glue. Yeah. Yes. All right. And we have to follow directions, she said. Next one. Uh, she rode her bicycle. Correct. She rode her bike. Thank you. I rode my bike in, in the tennis court. All right. Next one. The girl played with her. Cousin. Actually, she, she doesn't mention it, right? Yeah, de hecho no lo menciona. She doesn't mention uh -huh. cousin. The father, you know, states it. Yeah, yeah, correct. You went with your cousins, he says. All right. And the, the last one? At a, a house. At a house, right? Correct. At home, right? Yeah, most likely. Welcome home, dad. Yeah, that's why. That's why. Welcome yeah. home, dad. So the girl is already at home and the father is the one getting home, right? So that's that's the context over there. Thank you, uh, Miss Sonia. Now let me share with you the uh, the script to this conversation. All right, I just sent it to you, and as I told you before, please erase the uh, let's see the link address. Borremos la dirección web, por favor. Si va a compartir pantalla. Let me share with you the screen, and then we take it further. What do you think of the conversation, by the way? ¿Qué pensamos de la conversación? Was it difficult? It may be interesting. Uh, you can say I need more practice. Uh, you can you can tell me. Yeah, any any uh, opinions over here? Or no comments, verdad? Como las celebridades de Hollywood, no comments. It's, it's very sweet. Yeah, the girls is sweet though. Correct. All right, so uh, take a look at my screen. Let me share with you the conversation over here. So I can clarify some uh, uh, pronunciation details over there. All right, let me make this a little bit bigger. All right, let me zoom it and then we take it further. Si es muy grande, reduzco la pantalla. Is it okay? We're good? So we're fine, my friends. It's okay. Okay, it's okay. Thank you. So, so Emily and the dad. So that's the name of the girl. Welcome home, dad. Oh, Emily, how are you today? Fine. Good. How was the school today? Really fun. Good. What did you do? We made things. Like what types of things did you make? We made books. You made books? Okay. And what else? We, uh, we made paper kangaroos. You made paper kangaroos? Okay, and what did, you, what did you need to make your paper kangaroos? What kind of supplies did you need? ¿Verdad? ¿Qué útiles ocupo? ¿Verdad? ¿Qué materiales ocupo? We use crayons, crayons, papers, glue, and we have to follow directions. Well, good. And what did you do after school? We went home, played, played games. Or she says, like, we, we went home, uh, we went home, played games. And did months uh, uh and did she make she makes uh i'm sorry he makes a pause over there de hecho hace una pausa como que le va a preguntar did uh, y al final solamente le confirma verdad es un enunciado and did uh so mom say you went to the junior high school i rode my bike in the tennis court junior high school es tercer ciclo all right tercer ciclo or middle school junior high school i rode my bike in the tennis court did you go by yourself so, vamos un poco la 